my sewing friends on behalf of uncommonthread.com I'd like to welcome you to our educational tutorial this month my name is Michelle Umloff I am a certified Saki teacher and I'm going to be talking to you about a couple different Saki products but first we're going to focus mainly on the Saki Fabrisavi as well as the Saki sticky Fabrisavi stabilizers I'm also going to cover Saki Cotton Blendables thread and then I'm going to show you how to make this really quick and easy faux knit scarf. Stabilizers are an invaluable tool for all of your sewing, embroidery, and crafting projects. Stabilizers are not just for machine embroidery. Stabilizers are a tool to help you resolve problems that you might encounter when working with many fabrics and textiles. There are other uses for stabilizers, especially when it comes to creative machine arts and crafts. Basically, there are four types of stabilizers, and today we're focusing on just two out of the six Saki wash away stabilizers. These stabilizers can either be used as a backing or a topper. I think Wash away stabilizers have revolutionized creative machine arts because of their very many different uses. Only your imagination is the limit and remember sometimes a stabilizer will help you get to point A to point B in your project and stabilizers are not just for machine embroidery. You will know that you have a package of wash away stabilizer in your hand by the blue packaging and the symbol that indicates it can be dipped into water. Also the packaging, the plastic uh, clamshell dis packaging is uh, designed to store and protect as well as dispense your stabilizer. Wash away stabilizer does not leave behind any stabilizer on your finished project because it completely washes away but it's not recommended for fabrics that cannot get wet. Wash away stabilizers are easy to remove if you can you would want to gently cut away any excess stabilizer fill up a bucket with mild warm water and then soak your project and agitate it a little bit and then discard that water it's safe to put into your flower bed and then you're going to repeat that process a few times and just when you think that you have all the stabilizer removed I'm going to suggest repeating that just maybe once or twice more for smaller or delicate areas, it's safe to use a damp Q-tip. You might find that you can rip away or tear away the stabilizer and then all you need is a, just a damp Q-tip to help take the rest of it off. You can combine layers of the wash away stabilizer and you can draw or trace directly on these stabilizers. They're not affected by the heat of your machine and they won't gum up your needles. So we're going to focus specifically on the Fabrisavi and then the sticky Fabrisavi stabilizers. Fabrisavi is a non-woven wash away stabilizer that has fabric like properties so it's soft to the hand. You can use it for embroidery, topping or backing. You can embroider directly on it and then you can use it for applique work. It comes in a one yard package, 8 and 20 inch roll, as well as a bolt. The Saki Sticky Fabrisavi Stabilizer is very similar to the Fabrisavi. The only difference is that it has a self adhesive and it has a removable backing. You can use it as for the topper and the backing as well. It's perfect for hoopless machine embroidery. You can make thread scarves. You can use it for reverse and sheer applique work. You can use it for collages, applying loose items and quilting templates. And you can also use it for as repositional templates. And here is just a couple projects that I, or one project that I offer called the Quilt of Valor. I might also refer to it as the Easy Peasy Drunkard's Path. And as you can see, I used the Sticky Fabrisavi as a quilting template on the top of my quilt. The Saki Sticky Fabrisavi Stabilizer is available in a one yard package, an 8 and 12 inch roll, and a bolt. It is also available in printable 8.5 by 11 sheets, and they're 12 sheets to a pack. 
The Saki Cotton Blendable Thread is very nice thread. It is a high quality Egyptian cotton that has been mercerized and it has a soft matte finish that gives it a warm soft natural look and feel. Mercerized means that it has been treated so that it is very strong. Saki Cotton Blendable Threads are available in 126 different colors. You can buy them by the individual spool and Saki also has four different types of packages or collections for the cotton blendable threads. And here are just a couple pictures of the various colors that are available. They're really, really pretty, much prettier in person, I must say. You can use Saki cotton blendable threads for quilting, embellishment, you can use them in your serger, and of course your craft and hand work. You can also use it to make thread lace. You can do freestanding lace, you can use it for bobbin work, thread painting, red work, and embroidery. And here is a picture of another class that I have called In the Heart of the Woods Landscape. Every day, UncommonThread.com offers you 15% off retail for the Saki products as well as all the other products that they carry in their store. The faux knit scarf. This is very, very easy. It's quick. Uh, it's suitable for a beginner as well as for children. You just need a very few supplies. You would want to get the 8 inch by 9.5 yard roll of the Saki Sticky Fabric Salvi, one spool of the 30 weight cotton blendable thread, and you would want that thread to coordinate, I suppose, with your variety of decorative yarns. And the more fun your yarns are, the more interest that they have, the different textures, the more cute and playful and trendy your scarf will be. You also want to use a 1490 Schmetz needle. You would want to use a quilt, quilting needle, a top stitch needle, embroidery, or metallic needle. These four different type of specialty needles are excellent needles to have in your resource center as we like to call it but I used a 1490 quilting needle for this project. To set up your machine you're going to use a triple stitch and I'll show you what that looks like in the next slide. If you don't have a triple stitch feel free to use a straight stitch. Your stitch length is going to be three and a half to about four. The stitch width will be set on zero. Your feed dogs will be raised and you can use your all prep pre purpose foot. The tension may need to be lowered when working with the Saki Cotton Blendables thread. You're going to use the 30 weight in the, both the top and the bobbin and then again you're just going to use a 1490 Schmetz needle quilting top stitch embroidery or even a metallic needle. This is what the triple stitch looks like on my machine. It just has a series of three stitches sewn side by side so you can see how that looks a little different than the straight stitch which is just up into the left of the uh, the circle. And this is what it looks like sewn out, the picture on the right. So it's just a very thick straight stitch for the most part. That is called a triple stitch. You want to begin by rolling out your fabric solvi and I probably rolled it out I mean you can pick any any length that you want maybe about 40 48 inches long and you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise and then you're gonna make sure that you're working on a flat surface and you want to carefully remove the release paper now once you remove the release paper the Fabrisolvi or the sticky Fabrisolvi is gonna lay nice and flat but if you need to you can use little pieces of the sticky Fabrisolvi and use them as a wash away tape just to help you secure things in place you're just gonna place your decorative yarns on one half of the sticky fabric solvi and then you're going to sandwich the, yar the yarns in between both halves of the sticky fabric solvi. Now if you want to fringe at the end of your scarf you want to begin and end sewing about six inches from the short ends and I've marked my stick sticky fabric solvi with a washable um, fabric marker and then you're just going to sew back and forth on the stabilizer as I've shown here and this is going to hold your yarns together 
After you've sewn the first row of stitching, you need to decide how far apart you would like your rows of stitching to be. So if you're just using a straight stitch and not the triple stitch that I have shown here, your first row, you kind of want to reinforce that. You might want to sew over it two or three times, but then it's safe to continue sewing throughout just as I've shown you. And the way that I space my lines of stitching is that I just go a presser foot width apart. So you can see the back of my presser foot is uh, against the line I had just sewn and I'm going to raise my presser foot pivot and continue sewing all the way over to the other end and I'm just going to go back and forth. Now you want to make sure that you sew, you, can, you want to stay on the stabilizer but you want to make sure that you stitch over all the threads especially the ones on the end because if you don't they're kind of going to uh, hang or droop a little bit when you wear your scarf so you want to cover all those threads. If you use less yarn and wider rows of stitching you're going to create a more delicate airy type scarf. If you use more yarns and um, closer rows of stitching you're going to have a thicker scarf and it, this type of scarf is perfect for adding more embellishments you're going to roll up the ends of the scarf to make it easier to sew. So the top picture is how I roll it up to get started and the bottom picture is as I'm working along I have both of the ends rolled up just so it's easier to manage underneath my machine. You want to remember to stop when you're about six inches away from the end and if you want the fringe that's why you're going to stop that far and it's a good idea to make your marks earlier like I showed you so you can you won't forget. To finish up your scarf you're going to fill a container with warm water, soak it and agitate it several times and then lay it flat to dry but I do recommend just in case you think you have all the stabilizer removed, it probably isn't. You want to uh, soak it a few more times or even run it underneath the uh, faucet. So this is what the finished result looks like. And the, the Saki cotton blendable threads were just perfect for this. This turned out really, really nice. I'm very pleased with it. If you like these type of scarf projects, you can find more of them in the book, Saki Secrets to Successful Embroidery. In addition, the other books that I have listed here contain many other projects such as the scarves and different types of projects that you can use um, to create things with the Solvi I'm sorry, with the sticky Fabrisolvi and the Fabrisolvi stabilizers. My name is Michelle Umloff and I am a certified Saki teacher. I have listed here a few of my classes that I have available in my classroom, my online classroom. You can become one of my sewing friends and receive the Not Your Grandma's Bowl class for free just to give you access to my classroom and check it out. I also have the confetti scarf. It's a similar project like I showed you today. And then coming up is the Quilt of Valor, aka the Easy Peasy Drunkard's Path. I have a podcast, the So Simplified Podcast, and you can find me on iTunes. And look me up in Facebook under So Simplified. Please visit my website sometime, www.sosimplified.com. We at Uncommon Threads, thank you very much for joining us. Remember, you can order all the products that you need and some to make this project, and you will receive 15% off retail every single day. To reach us, go to uncommonthread.com, or you can email us at uncommonthread at comporium.net. And remember to find Uncommon Thread on Facebook, and you can search uncommonthread.com, all one word, and you should find us very easily. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon.